Hello and welcome to today's YouTube episode. On today's sewing adventure I'm going to be sharing my top five blouse sewing patterns and I have some examples of those here beside me so let's get started. So the inspiration of sharing my top five blouse patterns to sew is inspired by Sew April Blouse it's quite difficult to say, <laughs> So April Blouse 2024, which is hosted by The Cloth Edit on Instagram. So that's Gabrielle from The Cloth Edit. And it's also co-hosted by Ruan, who is the Yorkshire Sew Girl. So basically, So April Blouse 24 is sewing a blouse in April and then sharing it on Instagram. So sometimes when there are sewing challenges, there is a specific date where you have to share your make. For this one, there is no specific date you can share your blouse at any time throughout the month. And as long as you use the hashtag, I'll put it down here below, as long as you use the hashtag SewAprilBlouse2024, then you can enter the competition. And there's lots and lots of lovely prizes. So it is halfway through April already, but these patterns here beside me, I'm quite confident that you would be able to sew up in, say, a weekend or over a couple of days. So there is still definitely time in the month to make these ones up. We've still got a good two weeks left. So you might recognize some of these patterns just by the different collar shapes and things like that already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get started. I've got at least a couple of examples from each pattern. One of the patterns, I only have one example, but I would really love to make another one of them up. I'll obviously get to that in a minute. Quickly before I start on that, I am wearing my Zadie jumpsuit. This is in a black cotton linen fabric, and I really like this one. Obviously, it's plain black. Um, I'll do a twirl. Really super comfy, um, a little bit cropped, and just the Zadie jumpsuit is a super comfortable pattern and really wearable, especially in black, literally goes with everything. So that is what I'm wearing today. That's the Paper Theory Sadie jumpsuit. So the first pattern I'm going to share with you today is the Patina blouse. It is a Friday Pattern Company pattern. I will give these sizes. I have them written down here and the measurements. So if I'm looking down over there, that's what I'm doing. This one, it goes from an extra small to a 7XL which is a bust measurement of 81 centimeters to 152 centimeters. So size inclusive pattern, which is really great. And I have two versions of the patina blouse. So what I really love about this one is this gorgeous statement collar. Now, obviously you can just make this one with the collar plain. I've seen loads of people make it with like a contrast actual color collar. So maybe on this one, I could have made a navy um, or I suppose any of the like pinks or reds that are in this fabric as well. This is just made from a cotton fabric and obviously I've decided to add the gorgeous yellow rickrack around the collar. This is a short sleeve version of the patina blouse. It's got a great construction. It actually has the burrito style construction for the yoke. If you're familiar with that, it's where you kind of roll this back piece up in like a burrito <laughs> and then kind of sew along here and then pull it out the side. If you've done that before, you know what I mean. If you haven't, it's not too difficult, but you do have to kind of follow the instructions quite carefully and make sure that you've got all of the correct sides together. Um, otherwise, obviously it doesn't turn out. So that is something interesting and maybe like it could be um, like an interesting technique to try if you haven't tried that one before. Obviously it's got like a little bit of a puff sleeve here and this one is just a cotton poplin that I got from Fabrics Galore but I really like it with the gorgeous little kind of ditzy flowers. I've also used the Me Made tag, this is a Paige Joanna tag and then I've used the Paige Joanna Pigeon Wishes buttons which are little yellow kind of flower shaped buttons. So yes, so that is my short sleeve version of the patina blouse. And then I have a long sleeve version, which is in this Lady McElroy fabric, which again is a floral one. Obviously this is the long sleeve version though. So it does, I'm pleased that I've got this long sleeve one because it's got a really cute kind of placket detail there. These are Pigeon Wishes buttons. I've used little brown flowers, which are really lovely. And they're all down the front as well. 
Now with this one, instead of using the rickrack around the collar, I decided to use this cotton. It was just a fat quarter um, piece that I had left over from quilting. Um, and I've kind of created this frill. It was I just made it up as I went along. This frill all the way around that front collar there. Obviously when I say all the way around, I didn't put it here, but around the outside of the collar, I should have said. So yes, um, obviously all of the construction is exactly the same, except it has got the long sleeves rather than the short sleeves. And this is a really lovely one. I love this fabric, it's so beautiful and joyful, and it's really lovely to wear. So the next pattern I'm going to show you is the Florence pattern by Merchant and Mills. Now this one goes from a size 6 to a size 28, which is a bust measurement of 78 centimeters to 106 centimeters. So this is the top here. And it doesn't have buttons down the front. I think a lot of people, when they think about a blouse, they think of buttons at the front, but this one doesn't. It's got this cute little button placket at the back. And this one you can also make as a dress as well. And what I really like about this one is it's got the top version has got this kind of peplum, um, which goes down at the front curve and then it curves up at the back, which I just really, really love. Um, this one is actually made from the Merchant and Mills linen fabric, the Susie Stripe fabric, and I really love wearing this one just with trousers. And, um, yeah, I just really love the colours. It's just a beautiful one to wear in summer, obviously, with that gorgeous linen fabric. So this one is really lovely to construct. Um, the button placket is actually all quite simple, and then it's just got a facing around the top, so around the top neck edge. So really lovely one to make and to wear. I do have another version of this one in this fabric. This is a cotton fabric, beautiful ditzy floral fabric, which I really enjoy wearing. And then again, that button placket at the back. Now this one is a little bit shorter, and this is actually made to the pattern measurements. The other one, I'll kind of compare them at the same time. The other one is just a little bit longer. I just added that extra bit to the peplum. Um, so this is one actually made to the pattern measurements. So yes, that is another lovely blouse top that you could make for So April blouse. And really simple construction. There's just a couple of darts here at this back, uh, on the back kind of shoulder seams. And yeah, really beautiful one. Really enjoy wearing this one. Now the next pattern I'm going to show you today is the Paper Theory Patterns Olia Top, or shirt rather, and I only have one version in this. Now this is made in this lovely viscose fabric, which is kind of like um, an animal print, with uh, lilac and green. And I really, really love this shirt. I would love to make another version of this shirt at some point. Now this one, in terms of size range, is from a six to a 28, which is an 80 centimeter bust to 142 centimeter bust. So they are the measurements for that one. It is quite a different construction. It was different to anything I'd done before. These placket sleeves, I did actually have to watch the online tutorial um, to figure out how to make them. They were quite different to anything I'd done before. Um, but that was really helpful and it kind of took you through step by step and they came out just fine. Um, I would, I did put the pockets in for this one, but because the viscose fabric is so kind of drapey, they do kind of drape a bit. So I would like to make another shirt um, without the pockets, and I think that would be much easier as well. But it is a really beautiful pattern, and I do really love wearing this one. Obviously, you can wear it. Um, I quite often wear it buttoned up um, to the top, but I could wear it open like a jacket. Um, you, can have, you can have it tucked out of your jeans or trousers. You can have it tucked in. So lots of kind of... Um, different ways to style this one and a really interesting construction as I said it was different to anything I had made before. See this yoke here kind of is all cut as one piece. 
I don't know if you can see it, but it's all cut as one piece and then you um, kind of connect it in a square at the front here on the shoulder seam. So the so the the <laughs> so the sleeves here is all cut in one piece as well. So I don't know if you can see that, but it kind of from the center placket here out to there, that's one piece. So quite an interesting construction and just a lovely box pleat at the back there too. So as I said, I'd really like to make another one of these. It's a really gorgeous shirt and you could wear it all year round. You could even make it with thicker th fabric and then you could you know, have it as more of a jacket style or obviously you could just make it as a shirt and yeah, just literally matches everything. So a really good pattern, which obviously is a blouse, could definitely be made for so April blouse 24. <laughs> so the next pattern I'm going to show you I have shown on my top five dress patterns, but it also comes as a blouse and it's too good not to share on So April blouse. It really is one of my top five, like probably ever patterns. So I'm gonna share it again. And this pattern is the Tilly and the Buttons Mani pattern. And this one, I'll just quickly do the measurements, goes from a size one to a size 15, which is a 76 centimeter bust 100 to 152 centimeter bust. So they are the measurements, fully size inclusive. And this is, if you've watched my YouTube before, I couldn't decide what to make with this fabric. This is a fabric that I got from Mood Fabrics when I visited New York last year, and I couldn't decide what to make with it, but I settled on the Marnie blouse, and I'm so pleased I did. Those pin tucks, on the front yoke and the uh, the arms, the sleeves, the top of the sleeves are absolutely stunning. And I also decided to add the neck ruffle on this one too. So I'm really pleased with this one. So with the Marnie blouse, there are quite a few different options. I've got three here that I'm going to show you today. So you can obviously make it with shoulder ruffles as well. Um, this one here, I decided to do the pin tucks along the front and the neck ruffles. But I do have another version here, which is made from a viscose fabric, where I just decided to do the pin tucks um, on the front yoke and the sleeves. And then I didn't do the neck ruffle. I just did a binding around the neck. So that is also an option as well. It's just so lovely, these gorgeous, Gathers, little gathers in this front section are just absolutely stunning. And then the last um, one you can make, I haven't made one with all three, so I haven't made a Marnie blouse with the pin tucks, the ruffles, and the neck ruffles. <laughs> but this is just to show you that lovely, gorgeous shoulder ruffle. So that is the version where obviously I've made the neck ruffle and the shoulder ruffle, but not the pin tucks. But it's just a really gorgeous. Um, elasticated sleeve at the bottom. In terms of construction, it really isn't that difficult for how beautiful it looks, but it really is a lovely blouse to wear. And again, um, you can wear it tucked in, you can wear it tucked out, um, and it just is such a beautiful statement piece. I've seen people wearing it like underneath vest tops, obviously with jackets and jeans and all sorts of things like that. So really lovely opportunities for styling with this one as well. One thing I will say is that in the pattern, the shoulder ruffles come just so that you would tuck this under. Now, obviously this viscose is quite um, a contrast on the other side, the wrong side of the fabric. So what I did was I actually cut double the amount of shoulder ruffles and then sewed them together so that if it flips over, so obviously if it flipped over, then you would actually see the wrong side of the fabric. So that's just something to be a bit mindful of of this pattern, but that's really, really easy to fix um, if you were making the shoulder ruffles. But yes, so Marnie pattern by Tilly and the Buttons, definitely on the top five. Um, I've also made it as a dress a few times as well, so maybe I'll have a break from Marnie for a while, but it is just a really beautiful pattern I would definitely recommend and it is a really gorgeous piece to have in your wardrobe as well. Now the last blouse pattern I'm going to show you is actually the Paper Theory Agnes pyjama pattern. Now I wear this pattern 
as a shirt, as a blouse, quite often. And I have made it as pyjamas, and I have made it obviously as a shirt, which I'm going to be sharing with you today, or as a blouse. So in terms of the size range for this one, it goes from a 6 to a 28, which is a measurement of bust measurement of 80 centimeters to 142 centimeters. So this one I am going to show you is one of my favorites. Now I, did, I said that I've got this as pajamas, so I've got brush cotton pajamas and double gauze pajamas made in this pattern, and they do come with like a little um, shorts or trousers that you can make obviously to complete the pajama set, but when I make it as a shirt, I just make the shirt and then I wear it during the day. So this is a really beautiful one um, that I made from upcycled tablecloths. So if you have a little look, it has got the most gorgeous embroidery that has been done by um, someone in the past or some people in the past. This is quite a few, This is, I think there's maybe three tablecloths in this one. If I come back, you can see, um, and I really enjoy wearing this one. I wear it as a jacket in summer, and I also wear it as a shirt as well, and I wear it whenever I can. So this one, what I really love about it is it does have a very simple construction. So what I mean by that, as you may have seen before when I lifted this up, is it's actually got a bat wing sleeve. So you don't have to insert a sleeve in this one. So that makes it super simple and super easy to put together. It does have a center back seam um, down the back. So it does have that, but then I really enjoy the collar construction as well. It's quite a different collar construction and it's got just a really beautiful kind of shape and it's very easy to make and to wear as well. Now I did actually make a YouTube tutorial about making this shirt, so I will put a link to that one below if you're interested in watching that and it will show you the process of how I made this out of the tablecloths. So that's one version of the Agnes shirt that I wear during the day. And another version of the Agnes shirt which I wear during the day is this one. And this one is made in the Fabric Godmother Joni print, I believe, and this is a viscose one. I didn't actually put the center back seam in this one because I didn't want to break this gorgeous pattern. But as you can see, I have um, use the pattern going vertically. The pattern actually is supposed to go horizontally but I just cut it on the 90 degree angle to the grain and it was absolutely fine. And I did try my absolute hardest to match the pattern so that if you have a look at the placket down the front it is matched up nicely and kind of didn't break the pattern up too much. Now I did actually go for a job interview in this shirt and I did get the job, that was last October. So that was good. So, you know, they didn't know I was wearing a pajama pattern. So that shows that it really can be seen as a normal everyday pattern. So that is the Agnes shirt. I'll just show you the buttons on this one. These are the Pigeon Wishes, gorgeous, lovely buttons there. So that is my last blouse pattern that I've got to show to you today. And that was the Agnes pattern by Paper Theory Patterns. So I am actually in the process of making a third Agnes top, which I hope that by the time I've finished editing this clip, I will be able to share with you. So fingers crossed for that. And then you'll be able to see that new make as well. My next YouTube clip is going to be my latest makes. I have been making a few things, so I'll be really excited to share that one with you. But for today, these were my top five blouse patterns. I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it inspiring. Maybe there's a pattern in there that you have that you haven't made yet and it's inspired you to have a go at it or maybe it's inspired you to have a go at something completely different that you didn't think that you would want to make and now you want to make it, hopefully. So yes, so that is it for today's YouTube episode. I really loved sharing all of these makes with you. And I hope that you enjoyed watching along today and that you've got some inspiration for So April Blouse 24. Remember that is the hashtag for that Instagram challenge. I know we're kind of halfway through the month, but as I said, these ones are not too difficult and I'm sure that you could get them made up 
quite quickly, definitely by the end of the month anyway. So that is it for today's YouTube episode. As I said, I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to know what you thought about the patterns that I shared with you today. Maybe you had a favorite pattern. Maybe you've made one of these too. Maybe you had a favorite make from today. I would absolutely love to hear what you've got to say. And I really enjoy reading all of your lovely comments. If you could like this clip, then I would very much appreciate that. Also, if you could subscribe to this YouTube channel, then I would love that. There's so many subscribers at the moment, so thank you so much for joining me regularly here. I really love having you and sharing my sewing makes and ideas with you all. I hope you have a wonderful day, afternoon, evening, whatever time it is for you, and I'll see you here again soon.